Okay. I've restarted recording locally to my computer. Okay, sure. Um, but when I stopped recording, it stopped your recording as well. So you're going to have to restart yours if you want to start. And it will give you the option of going to cloud or to your local computer. It will be on the bottom of the screen. Okay, um, I need to know who entered just barely and that says user. Who is that? Can you tell me your name, please? No, I'm not going to tell you who I am. No, I got you, but there's one other person oh. who came on. Um, who else is on the line here? I got somebody that just says user. Who is this? Can you, can you unmute yourself and just tell me your name, please, so I can rename you? Uh, you might try a chat message to the person, Casey. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hey, Sean. Hi. Sherry. Casey's already shared. Sherry's really transparent tonight. She had to take her dog out right before the meeting. Okay, it's, I got it. I got who that person is. Okay, let me just submit Lucian and rename this person. Okay. Is uh, HCTV a co-host now, Casey? Yes, and he's Perfect. recording. Perfect. Yep. Excellent. Uh, Rachel, okay. It's Rachel Kane. Hi, Lucian. Hi. It's a full-time job getting all these people on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like pop up, so and so's waiting. <laughs> okay, so Tom's online. Casey, the uh, when I had to do this the first time was when we had the uh, community event for the police department with Greensboro, and there were like twenty eight people, and like five <laughs> wow. minutes in, I realized, oh, I got to keep track of the waiting room, and I had not realized that at the time. So I can I understand what you're feeling right now. <laughs> Oh, there's Kaylee. Okay, got her coming in. Hi, Kaylee. So we've got Lucian Wiz Kaylee, and we've got the ghost of Sherry Cornish. She, yep, she's just taking out her puppy dog first. She'll be back in a minute. <clears throat> Casey, just a reminder to start recording too, just as a backup. Okay. If I share a screen on the bottom of the screen. I'll just record on my computer then. That's what I'll do. And then we can save it to our server or something. That's what I'll do. Okay. Sherry's back. Sorry, she just said you everything. Just stay out there for a minute. <laughs> um, all right. So, looks like the gang's all here. Mm -hmm. My computer says 601. So, I'm going to call the regular select board meeting the order assuming i can find the agenda there we go 
Um, and so first thing is set just agenda. Does anybody have any um, select board members have anything they want to add or change or any of that? Um, I do possibly have a change. I'm just not sure if we need to do it as an additional item, but um, we're doing the um, loan application for the Clean Water State Revolving Fund and at the same time, possibly, or adding an item to authorize Sean to enter into the engineering agreement once it's approved by the state. So I don't know how you wanna um, let's, do that. Let's do that as part of the same project, right? Okay. Yeah, it is. So let's do that. Um, okay. Yeah, as part of that. Yeah, I get some feedback from somewhere. Tom, can you be on mute maybe? Thank you. Ooh. Nice. Um, all right, so let's do that as, um, what is that one? That is item number five, right? Mm -hmm. let's put it there. Um, anybody have anything else? Maybe we'll make, make it through uh, closer to the scheduled time tonight. Um, do do uh, select next thing is select board to approve minutes from last time, which was November the nineteenth. Um, does anybody uh, can somebody make a motion that we accept those minutes and and we can discuss changes? So moved. Second. Okay. Do we have any um, discussion on those minutes? I already submitted my request. All right. Um, so all in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. aye. And Wiz was an aye. So I got everybody. That was Sherry, Wiz, Kaylee, Lucian, and me. Um, excellent. Next up is communication from the audience. Do we have anybody on our virtual audience who would like to um, address the select board about something that's not coming up later on our agenda. Hearing none, um, we're gonna roll forward into the town manager report. So Sean Fielder, please uh, tell us what you guys have been up to in the town manager's oh, office. Sorry, Oh, I thought, <laughs> can we just back up a moment? Yeah, yeah. Do you want? Do you have a yes? I just had just, from the audience. Yes, I'm sorry. I thought I thought uh, somebody else was going to say something. We just wondered um, because of the weather this weekend for the balloon test. Do you know when the town will know if they're doing it on Saturday or Sunday? My my understanding is that um, the contractor. I, the, I thought it was maybe left to the contractor who's doing it, but. I'm not totally sure about that. So, so we might not know um, really until just look for tire tracks going up there or something. I was going to look for a balloon. <laughs> All right. So, so that they'll just do know. it or they won't do it, I guess. And there, the, there's no plan for them to communicate with um, the town. Not that, I us know. No, uh, not that I'm aware of, Sean. Yeah, I'll just after uh, what I understand on this is they were going to be posting updates uh, on down Racklin and Merton's website. Uh, so I checked this afternoon. They hadn't changed anything. It's a little bit hard to find, but I was able to find the news update on the DRM website. So during the meeting tonight, I will actually look for that to see if there's been an adjustment. Uh, we did. I did communicate with uh, Janiel Smith uh, from Centerline this afternoon and copied the DRM attorney. Uh, basically, she emailed to us, you know, we're trying to move forward. And I said, okay, we'll just keep an eye on things. Obviously, we all know the weather's not going to be great, I don't believe, coming into this weekend. Uh -huh. okay. um, Sean, if you do get an update from somebody tomorrow in time to post on the town website, could you maybe post there? Absolutely. I think that would be good. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'll super. check. I'll, yeah, I'll thank, check as we're talking. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Rachel. Yep. That was it. <laughs> thank you. Let's figure out these buttons. Uh, all right. Back to the town manager's report. 
Okay, so um, this it ties right in with the first item I was going to note. So we heard a little bit about the balloon test in case, uh, or, sorry, good evening, everybody. Um, if folks are not aware, um, AT&T um, did agree to do the second balloon test uh, for the uh, proposed cell tower on um, a portion of, um, or uh, in the vicinity of the Buffalo Mountain area. And uh, what's shown now on the uh, website is uh, Saturday the 5th and or Sunday the 6th. Uh, I don't know, this snowstorm could be an issue. So I'll update and I'll do a search as we're looking, uh, going through things tonight. If there's a change, we'll try to do our best to get the notice out via the town's website, as well as Front Porch Forum. We did post some information about this on Front Porch Forum. So coming off the last meeting, I did uh, communicate with uh, DRM and the public should be aware that the process to extend the public comment period is in the pipeline, uh, pushing out to January 13th. So that's uh, one item to be aware of. On the town's website right now, I think it's the second news item. If anybody needs to see links to get to the case number where the uh, public utility, the uh, new singular uh, LLC, which slashes uh, AT&T, also known as AT&T. The information is up uh, on the town's website, so you can quickly access the link back to the Public Utility Commission information if you uh, have anything you want to review at that location. I'm working, uh, change subjects. Um, um, I'm working on scheduling with uh, NVDA. Uh, please remember that we had a, we did have a citizen petition a little while back to uh, just see what could be done about the intersection of Glenside and Mill Street. So I'm in the process of uh, lining up the consultant. I've exchanged a little bit of information with the expert from uh, Northeast Vermont Development uh, Association, trying to get uh, him to just do an assessment on this intersection, make sure we're uh, doing what we need to do in regards to signage and uh, other items. The information at hand is that um, we wouldn't jump right doing uh, jump uh, right to installing a traffic signal. It's very low probability of something like that happening, but we are going to be going through the motions of just making sure we're doing what we need to in regards to the uh, manual for uniform traffic control design parameters. Um, so we're working on that. Uh, I don't know if Tom was going to comment on this, but I will. Uh, highway crew did set up no parking here to corner sign on the parking spot. It's the one that is directly adjacent to the pull in to the post office. So we have installed the sign there. Unfortunately, I saw somebody parking in the spot this evening, but at least we've got the sign up and you know, moving toward reminding folks, hey, please stay out of that one site. So it gives folks coming out of the post office a little bit better sight line. Well, also the crew did- endorsing. I've watched people parking there for the last three days, even after the sign was up. Yeah, so um, I, I know there's a number of people on the call. I'm not sure if Chief Cochran is on, but if yeah, hopefully you heard that last comment, but we'll, I'll check in with the Chief on that, uh, Wiz. So thanks for pointing that out. Um, also for highway crew work, they did some ditch work and road edge uh, material cleanup uh, in the vicinity of the East Hardwick Main Street Bridge. So uh, what that did on this last rainstorm this earlier this week, it actually it did a really nice job with the improvements they've made of uh, keeping some material from ending up on that bridge deck and in the uh, approaches to either side. So thanks to the crew for doing that change. I, I think it was a really good adjustment. Um, uh, I had a, a ask from the, um, the Planning Commission slash Pedestrian Traffic Safety Task Force recently about, you know, what is the pricing for one of the solar paneled uh, radar speed feedback, readback devices. And this is something that um, my observation is um, going into 2021's um, uh, next cycle of discussions on those improvements the task force had put before the select board, we can be considering this. The price on this particular unit, it's a 60 watt solar panel unit. The price is $2,675 plus a little bit of shipping costs. So I just wanna make sure the board is aware of that. Uh, Tom received the quote, so we've got that to be looking at when you know, we wanna make some determinations if we wanna start going with some of these speed readback devices. So we do have that information in hand. I have reached out to a local survey firm to get them involved with the Riverview Street uh, sorry, River Street Review. I uh, haven't had any direct conversations as of yet, but um, we'll keep that rolling so we can get their input and assessment and uh, you know have their feedback on what are some you know, steps we should be considering and uh, just trying to get more figured out, if you will, on the River Street issue. So that's in the pipeline. 
We did move forward on hiring our new part-time community development coordinator. I'm uh, pleased to announce Jeff Sawicki, who's a Peachum resident, uh, started with us this week. It'll be first time in my professional career I've started somebody completely virtually and from a remote location, but I, it's workable and we're going to make a good go of it. And Jeff brings a really good skill set to the table. So his, uh, he'll, he'll be working um, primarily on uh, securing other grant support opportunities for various town initiatives. He brings a really good skill set to the table. He is a small business owner. He has a business in St. Johnsbury. So uh, he's going to be a good asset for our team. We have his uh, email set up. Um, we'll get this up on the website. I realized I didn't do this as of yet, but we'll get it up on the website. And um, he does have a voicemail extension established as of now. Once we go back to so-called normal operations for our municipal offices, um, he'll have some time um, dedicated and working out of what was formerly the uh, Community Justice Center on the second floor. So we've got some space dedicated for him moving forward. Um, I work behind the scenes a little bit and thanks to Tom uh, who also is involved with this right now. We are collaborating or collaborated with I should say uh, Northern Counties Healthcare. Uh, they are uh, working very closely with the state of Vermont and we're moving forward. Uh, they are moving forward I should say on having a COVID-19 testing facility at the Hardwick Fire Department. So this information is now up on our website. I did put it up on the front porch forum tonight as well. This is going to, uh, this is part of the state's initiative to have testing, COVID testing available, coronavirus testing available uh, within any drive location in the state of Vermont in you know, 30 minutes or less. So um, just a couple snippets from the uh, announcement that's out. It's no cost to anyone. They do have, uh, it's a self-administered nasal swab. Uh, turnaround time's about two to three business days. Uh, what they're doing is Saturday, uh, as of now, it would be testing on Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, nine to noon. And then on Tuesdays from 3.30 to 6.30, they, uh, they plan to kick off the first round of testing uh, opportunity here this weekend. It's a drive-through type process. So we're trying to do our part as a community just to help um, citizens of Hardwick, but others, you know, in case they need to get a test, uh, you know, with the goal to try to keep everybody, uh, keep exposures down and keep everybody healthy. So, uh, again, we're just trying to do our part here. Um, two final points. We're, we're continuing to operate under uh, no and limited public access uh, approaches and obviously doing remote meetings tonight being an example. Field operations are continuing uh, and for our customers, uh, those needing service uh, from us, uh, you know, if it's office type service, just please plan to use your phone or email and we're being as responsive as we can be, you know, given this um, unprecedented uh, work environment. So, uh, you know, our team's keeping up and uh, doing our best to, you know, provide this service for everybody. Uh, final thing for this evening would be just uh, reminding everybody, keep practicing social distancing measures, which would include the use of masks. It does make a difference. Um, we're, um, you know, we're just, we're going to have a, a tough couple of months ahead of us is my observation and uh, just one foot in front of the other and uh, we'll keep trying to do our best. So that's what I have for everybody this evening. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Yeah, you covered a lot of ground. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's pretty it's a little busy right now for good for good you know there's a lot happening but it's good yeah. things you know we're, we're we're continuing to get a lot done for the good of the community so um, you know, right. the, the staff here uh, the staff works really hard so I commend all our team members they really are getting the job done so uh, you know they need to be commended on you know what we're dealing with right now. Yeah, and on that note, we'll segue to to Tom Fadden and. Uh, Tom, do you want to, it, maybe Sean stole all your thunder, but if not, do you want to tell us what the road crew's been up to? Oh, that's all right. Uh, this is just a few other things. Uh, we did manage to get out the last couple of days there before we got this little bit of snow and cold uh, to go around, and we did manage to uh, cover quite a, quite a few of our roads there to redo some of the potholes that were coming up. Uh, so we've been doing that. The guys have also been hauling back some more more uh, material to the shop so we can get ready for spring or uh, if we have another break here in the winter here where things get really potholy we'll have some material to go around and cover cover the stuff up uh we do still have one truck down so hopefully this storm is going more east than what they thought now so right now they're only calling maybe two to five for this weekend so which is good uh because we got any more than that than uh, being down the truck that's gonna slow us uh 
process down a little bit. Uh, besides that, and guys have been taking quite a quite a few days off here and there. Uh, we've been, you know, having having a lull because you know, well, we've gotten everything done. I guess and ahead there uh, for the summer. Uh, so we've been doing that. But when the guys are around and stuff, they've been going out and uh, as a crew of two and cutting some brush here and there on some of the back roads. Uh, they cut some of the good apple trees there up to on center road there to whip those back a little bit. Uh, a little bit of water here and there. Uh, we did spend a day down to uh, the sewer plant with Kenny, uh, help help him replace some my uh, aerator lines. Uh, but besides that, uh, I've been getting prices on a new truck there to replace the one that we want to uh, uh, replace next year that we've up in the uh, capital replacement. That's the truck that's also broke down right now. Uh, as of right now, I mean, if we were to purchase the truck for uh, the holdover year for 2020, we'd probably save somewhere around eleven to twelve thousand dollars less than what we would if we were to purchase uh, a new 2021 model. Uh, so I've been working on that. Uh, but besides that, everything else is going good. So. And. Uh... <laughs> The, our lead time, just to remind everybody, the lead times on the trucks are really long, right? I mean, by the time you get it and have a body put on it, it's... Well, yeah, for an example, we got Pearly's truck last year. We purchased that truck uh, or put an order in on his truck in December. And we just got that truck, uh, what, last week, I believe? Uh, somewhere is that towards the end of November, I think, somewhere 20th. around there? It was the 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks, Case. Uh, so we're almost a year out. So yeah. By the time we get the truck. So, yeah. Um, I mean, with this, I mean, this is a stock truck that that they have already, uh, and they're looking to get rid of it because it's a 2020 model and the new 2021s are coming in, and that's where we'd be saving, you know, eleven thousand uh, dollars for purchasing a 2020, which I don't think we need a 2021 model just to spend the extra eleven thousand dollars on. Uh, okay. but anyway, so. Oh, good. Keep at it. Thank you, Tom. Any uh, questions for Tom while we have him? Well, hearing none. Thank you, Tom. And let's move on to police department report. Is Aaron Cochran on the, I don't see him here, but. He is oh, not. Okay. I will uh, reach out to him. I don't know. Eric, one more thing. Yeah. Uh, just remind everybody, uh, there is a no parking ban right now that started November 15th. I know we've got a couple of cars that have been parking constantly on Church, Church Street. There's like three vehicles right there. And there's a couple that's been down in the village parking lot. There is a parking ban that started November 15th, and that runs till April 15th. From from uh, I believe it's midnight till six a.m. in the morning. So yeah. uh, I am going to be stay stapling some signs up there tomorrow around that apartment building just to pre warn them. So yeah, but yeah, but. Tom, that's um that's the information that would be listed in our uh, winter operations notice that I called you about today, correct? Yeah, that's correct, John. Yep. So what I'll do also is we can get the winter operations notice up on the website as well for everybody. Okay. Yeah, and so right. and the point with that is to get people to not park on the street so that you guys can plow. Um, right, I mean, you know, I mean, everybody watches the weather, I'm assuming. Uh, you know, if they could move their vehicles, you know, when it's going to snow. Uh, times when it's not going to snow, I personally don't have a problem. Uh, but it's a lot easier if the vehicles are gone uh, for us, you know, to clean everything up, so. We and don't want to toll anybody away, but but, but you will. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. At their expense. So. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Tom. That was right. a good reminder. All right. Thanks. Um, the police department. I know we got a um, incident report in the shared drive um, to look through. Uh, and I'm not sure, I don't have anything else. So if Aaron's not with us, should I, can I just move on, Sean, or do you want to provide anything? 
Um, no, I think uh, I know he was going to talk about the incidents. I don't have anything else. I assume he's on a call. I'm having Casey text. I don't have the capability to text him from my home location. So my so, apologies. I can't track him down. Well, I don't think we need to. He knows we're mm -hmm. meeting. And if he had yeah. something that was urgent, he would be here. And if he, if there's nothing urgent, then Sherry? I, Sean, do you have a little update, at least on there, um, with the COVID cases and all that stuff? Are they still quarantining, or is there anything new there? No, um, we. Um, it would be the same as the last. Uh, actually, well, let me just say where we're at right now, and I think I uh, maybe we were just about to initiate last time out the uh, the the staff person that um, did have to isolate. Uh, was uh, cleared to come back to work and then the other two parties went through their quarantine period so they were also cleared to go back to work. We did have one other individual in another department that had received a call from uh, the Department of Health and they were considered a close contact so they also did have to quarantine. This was another uh, parallel process that was going on. So as of right now um, we don't have any stuff uh, uh, that are either quarantined and or isolated and though the the, the the um, party and the family that uh, did contract um, have are in their recovery state and doing well, fortunately. Great. Okay. Yeah, I, I just, um, I, I would like to add this, um, you know, the, the information at hand is that, you know, we do have, you know, we've got some, we've got some uh, incidents, um, you know, pretty significant incidents from COVID-19 in our community as we speak. So, um, this definitely is going to be impacting uh, people all of us know and interact with. So uh, I, this is not a scare tactic comment, but you know, what I've been relaying to folks is uh, I think you really need to just assume everybody is, um, uh, you know, you just protect yourself is how I might say this. Uh, you know, anybody you're interacting with, you know, right now, just given what we see with the incidents numbers coming up, it's, it's serious right now. Um, you know, let's, we're not going to stick our heads in the sand, but we, you know, we got to do the right thing to get control on the, the numbers is uh, what we got to try to do right now. So that's it. Thanks. Um, so moving along next is item one, select board to discuss pedestrian bridge improvement strategy. And I know, um, so everybody knows that the pedestrian bridge was closed earlier this year because um, a broken cable was spotted. Um, Sean got a, uh, quickly got an engineer to just do a quick assessment and that assessment came back that we shouldn't have the bridge open, that it was unsafe. And we've since had a, a more in-depth assessment that offered some possible strategies um, moving forward. Um, one would be to repair what's what's there on the 100 year old bridge that has a fair amount of decay and um, another approach is to replace it entirely and um, I don't know uh, what more information we have tonight do we have more Sean than that no um, just we had I had reported uh, last time out um, on the uh, second report that we've got there was some um, basic numbers attached to uh, if you did a replacement strategy um, the the range of pricing shown there was uh, 40 to sixty thousand dollars it wasn't recommended as the preferred strategy it might buy us a year or two uh, but it would allow it to be used of course and then um, a replacement bridge was noted in this most recent report in the order of magnitude 200,000 to 300,000 plus any rework of the abutments. So those are some of the numbers that were thrown at us. And is this something that Jeff is going to be looking into if we are, are asking for um, either a repair or a historic replacement? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So, so maybe what I yeah maybe what I could offer Eric is that um, what I'm thinking about right now um, is uh, you know I just need to see um, you know what what comes out of the discussion this evening and uh, Jeff and I had already talked about during his orientation meeting that this will be a project he'll be you know, one of the projects he would be involved with as far as just trying to seek out uh, you know what those funding opportunities might be 
and I've already done a little bit of research on this. Uh, I, th I think a couple areas where we have some opportunities are USDA Community Facilities Grant, USDA Rural Business Enterprise Grant, and then also yeah. Preservation Trust of Vermont. So we know there's a couple of uh, opportunities where we could go after this. Uh, you know, bear in mind we have uh, competing interests in town for other projects. So that's you know that's that's not news. We got some other things that we're trying to figure out some improvements on. And then, of course, uh, when we seek out these grant opportunities, you know, we always have the match, the local match that we need to put on the table. And that match is variable depending on, you know, the grant, assuming you receive the grant and uh, what they offer, if you will. Yeah. Kaylee. You. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, Sean, if that, um, so we're, I know that there were at a previous like board meeting, there was talk of the Preservation Trust and the bridge. Um, do you envision that, that that timeline would be longer if we're looking at grants? Like, are we, are we looking at trying to figure this out for um, next summer? Or if we're looking for funding from other sources, are we, do you have any sense of what kind of timeline we might be thinking about? I think I would stick with what Wiz noted uh, in a previous select board meeting, and that was back in, if I'm not mistaken, October. And Wiz pointed out, you know, folks probably ought to anticipate a year. Um, I, I wouldn't see us in a position to do a replacement. A full replacement is definitely into next year, right? Um, a temporary, uh, I think, is a different discussion. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't see anything necessarily getting done through these winter months, but you never know. You know sure. It's just not a night. Um, I just uh, want to volunteer to uh, help with it in, in whatever way we can. Um, I can. I don't know if it's time now to talk about a little bit of a task force so that we don't pile it on to our new uh, person. Right out the, you know, I mean, a little bit of assistance. It seems like it's, we would need to work out a timeline and, and, and have like a budget that we would figure out whether we do have design work done, price out what that is, make those decisions. Um, isn't that the next step after we have a better idea of what it's going to cost to either repair or replace? Wouldn't we, I, I don't know, that's how we approach things at the townhouse. So, you know, it's two to three hundred thousand dollars. Obviously, we're going to go for some grants, and it's going to take possibly two two years to get it done. But it all depends on how those grant deadlines come in, and how, what their match is, and all of that stuff. I think that um, some concerted effort, and we could be successful. And I'm volunteering to help with it. Yay! Um, I I'll think help, Lucian. One thing I wanted to just say, I got in this a little bit at the last meeting, but the um, I just wanted to see some numbers on what it would take to take it out, because I think that should be in the mix, um, just as, as a discussion point. So is that something you could do, Sean, is to get, get talk to somebody in the know about that? Yeah, if that's the board's preference, I could check into that. I would say that we'd need to have a vote on that, because I can't imagine removing a, a major part of our infrastructure downtown. Well, I'm not talking about taking it out. I'm talking about getting a number to take it out so that it's in the mix right now. Probably all metals, I bet, I bet they would be able to put a number on that. Others might too, but. Um, yeah, so another thing that I think of, Sherry, when, when you were talking about timelines is, and I don't know, maybe this is a, a touching the third rail as well, but um, <laughs> if it, uh, one of the things that was mentioned in the report is it would be possible to replace that bridge with a prefab bridge, which comes on a truck and is set in place with a crane. Well, I don't imagine that we'll get any historic um, uh, uh, support on that. No, I wouldn't imagine that we would, but um, it, it's still possible that it could be cheaper. Oh, and it could not. and it could be a nice bridge. Mm. I mean, there are some nice prefab bridges out there. I don't know. I'm just throwing again. Maybe maybe 
maybe touching the third rail to like talk about changes to the swinging bridge. But um, as Wiz showed us through uh, some photo documentary history, there were many iterations of that bridge before the current one. Um, so Eric can I offer this and it's not just real quick. One of the things we heard today at a yellow, the yellow barn planning meeting, and this isn't to uh, offer up what the bridge should be moving forward, but I know we heard from uh, somebody who's involved with a pretty significant commercial project right now that steel prices, actually people doing steel work, the pricing has gone down. It doesn't sound right with everything we've been hearing about the economy, but steel prices and steel work, people are scrambling for that right now. So just for what it's worth. Yeah. So maybe, maybe the timing is good. Who knows? And maybe we ought to. Um, I just, I just want to point out that although there were many, 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 many bridges on that site before, this is the one that worked. Yep. And it's over a hundred years old. And but, it gets a lot of use and it's a big part of our de economic development. It's a, a part of downtown. Yeah, I mean, I agree that it's part of downtown. I think it's, um, you know, it's it's uh, kind of iconic for our downtown. It also, you know, we have uh, parking challenges and it, it makes an easy connection to the Daniels building lot, which is important. We also have, um, you know, school uh, offices over there that people walk back and forth to the elementary school. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's integral to our downtown. I'd love to see something there. I personally have never found that bridge that's existing to be beautiful. But no, it's not. It's just me. It looks rough. Mm -hmm. um, but so, it was also relatively unmaintained for many years. I mean, we just used it. We used it up. Yeah. Yeah, we, I'm sure the town got its money's worth out of it. Absolutely. Um, Three hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> right, I'm for putting that in for sure. <laughs> Lucian's in for the three fifty. Hey, Haley. So I guess my uh, just a question. I think a task force is an awesome idea. It sounds like there's an opportunity to definitely get more information and more of a timeline. Um, I guess my question is, and maybe we can we can answer this in our budget conversation tonight. But do we do we need to be thinking about this for next year in our budget? And if we're not, then are we um, then are we just going to address it as we find more information? So I, I think you're absolutely right that if we're gonna do something about it, we're gonna need to pay for it in the, <laughs> in the budget. Um, so. We, uh, task force, so I've heard task force thrown out. We've had some volunteers. We do have an actual staff person now who can work on looking for grant funding and stuff. I'm also, I mean, I, I, I hesitate to, to get us too bogged down in process, but um, it is something that's, I think, probably pretty important to a lot of people in town and visually and, um, and also in a utilitarian sense, I wonder if it's something that we want to, you know, do we do we want to try to do something formal to get more community input on what people would like to see there? Because it's going to be a new bridge, right? Like if e so, we could either re repair the bridges there, which costs fifty to sixty grand and buys us like five or ten years, which doesn't seem like a good use of funds to me. Or as Lucian is seeming to um, propose, we could try to do without it. But it seems to me like the most likely course forward is gonna be a new bridge. And even if we're looking at something historic, it's still not, it's gonna only be historic in the sense that it has some visual cues that remind you of the old bridge, right? It won't be the current bridge. Right. So, given that there's a likelihood that it will be a brand new bridge do we want to solicit more community input in a some through some sort of um 
outreach that, you know, where we try to gauge people's impression on, you know, would you like to have no bridge or maybe, I don't know if the no bridge thing is, is in there, but we could put that in there and, um, or like another um, suspension bridge or a um, prefab bridge within our, I don't know. Or do we want to, are we good? Do we think, do we think we know the, what people expect? There's a variable on your last one, Eric, and that is it's a prefab that is made to look like what is existing now. So it's, it's you know, you run the deck in and then they put up the cables and the hangers. Oh. They aren't structural, but it makes it look like, oh, you, know, really? that, you know, it's maintaining that historical character. Really? I didn't know that was yeah. a possibility. Yeah. Hmm. Kaylee, did you move your hand or are you just moving your hand? No, that was, I was just looking at that. Um, at the reinforcing of the existing structure with the steel beams. Sorry, yeah. I moved my hand. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think it's important for the conversation now that everybody is aware when we met with um, Lisa from Preservation Trust, uh, she assisted with getting uh, engineering ventures involved with uh, this most current inspection and uh, more detailed inspection. She was already getting, she'd already um, put this in terms of, you know, we, we can assist you with uh, seeking out variable um, partner and funding support and, you know, assist in this process. So, uh, you know, if that's the board's prerogative, we've got a good resource there. And um, I, I would see our uh, new community development coordinator, you know, involved on this. Just one other thing, um, you know, we obviously have other uh, infrastructure needs um, and that are potentially going after these same pots of money. So memorial slate repair and mm -hmm. soffit is probably about a thirty thousand dollar job. We don't have that money available right now. We're about you know zero dollar balance on the capital improvement line item for the memorial building. Um, you know we've got other needs, and that's that's not news. We've already talked about this, so that's it. Yeah, we need a new highway garage. So it just yeah. seems like if there's um, willingness and interest from any individuals in the community, we could put it out there. We we could say that we're forming a task force and invite people to um, show interest. Um, we could uh, ask the planning commission if they're interested in helping in any way, or if they have members of the planning commission that would be interested in being involved in it. Um, of course, it seems like Jeff would be. Uh, part of it um, in the discussions and Kristen and I, you know I mean I don't think it's that, that hard to figure out that of course we're not going to figure it out here in our select board meetings in our regular meetings it's not going to happen so it seems like a separate group needs to focus on it a little bit and then maybe that that group can come back to the select board and make recommendations with ideas about how much it would cost for design fees and how much it would cost to replace it or get a prefab one or what those options are. We don't have all that information yet. So, uh, you know. Yeah. All right. So it sounds like a great idea. Huh? I think that sounds like a great idea. Go for it. Yeah. So the task force of the select board generally includes two members of the select board, but it's okay. I can, I will run with this because Wiz, Wiz volunteers obviously too. Wiz is interested as well. Yeah, that's two. Anybody else? And then Jeff would be one of our people that is at least involved with us on a, at least on a, you know, ancillary level so that he can help with other resources. I mean, the, he, ha, he knows a lot about this sort of thing. Yeah, that'd be a great way to have him interact with you, Sherry, and Wiz, and also get a feel for the community a little bit. And it's a pressing project. We should do something. The thing we should not do is leave it the way it is forever. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. So you guys are going to take that, and you're going to report back um, in January. Okay. Is that good? Sure. All right. Doesn't mean you have to be finished. Just you're just going to report. Yeah. What you know. Does anybody have the? Um, I know we have a meeting on the seventh. What's the next one? 
The so next select board meeting, you mean in January? It would be yeah. the 21st. Yeah, it would be a lot like 7 plus 14, probably. Yeah, but I think we made it the 7th. It's usually the 1st and 3rd, is that right? Yeah. That's the 7th. Yeah, okay, so it'd be 21. Report back on the 21 meeting. The 18th of February. And then we make a new plan. Say it again, Sherry. It's the 7th and the 21st of January. Yep. And the 4th and 18th of February. The report yep. would be due back January 21. Sure. <clears throat> is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Sherry and Liz, for taking that and moving it along because you're right. We're not going to decide here. We're not going to make it happen here. Nope. Um, all right, moving along. Next item is select board to discuss proposal from East Hardwick resident to purchase town property. This is, um, this reminds me of a similar thing we had a year or two ago with some property over in the East end, uh, or sorry, West end. Um, so this is a case where someone in East Hardwick noticed that the town owns an adjoining parcel um, and they have offered to buy it from the town. Um, it's a small parcel that apparently the town acquired a tax sale. Um, and I think the purpose of this discussion is, is basically to figure out the board's willingness to um, move forward in this. I don't think we need to make any like decisions about pricing or how the contract, how it would all work. It's just, you know, concept on the, are we in interested in pursuing this as a concept selling this parcel? Does everybody know which parcel we're talking about here? You get the info. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is there any, I can't think of a reason why we'd want to, why it'd be useful for the town. Can you, can anybody, that I think it would be useful for the town if someone else owned it because if someone else owned it, they would pay tax on it. We, <laughs> so, not much taxes though. <laughs> not much, but some. You know, every little bit helps. Yeah. Right. Kaylee. I was just wondering if Tom had any thoughts on um, there's um, obviously there's the right of way from the main road, which is right there. And there is, it's kind of the only access to the bottom of that bridge in East Hardwick. Um, and typically to get down there, you kind of like go along the gravel. It's not great, but I'm just curious, is, is there anything that we should consider from a road standpoint about that parcel or a plowing standpoint? Um, there might be none, I'm just curious. I think there's also a hydrant, a fire hydrant there, or there used to be. Tom, are you still listening? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to figure out what parcel you guys are talking about. Are, are you talking about the one there that goes down? Oh, if you're coming down off the hill in East Hard Hardwick, just where you get the bridge, go to the right and go down in there. Yep. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. There's no hydrant down in there, uh, but uh, we have used that before for water source uh, if we need to pump out from from the river. Hmm. And Tom, Could something like that be built into a contract if we were to sell it? Could it be part of the sales agreement that the town has access for those purposes? Sure. I, I, I would say that would be good, Liz. I mean, you know, put in there the, you know, fire department has the right to uh, obtain, you know, right away down through there for purpose of, uh, you know, water use or whatever for fires and stuff. Is that the only? Uh, is that the only use that you guys make of that land? Tom? Yeah, because we. Yeah, yeah, because we've never plowed that or anything like that, Eric. So. Okay. But, I, I, I'm afraid to bring it up, but it's also River Street. No, it is. I thought it was the other side of the no. road. It's extension. No, it's on the of, other side. But it's it's an extension of. So it's being used now to access the backside of the post office. Oh, Sean, that's on the other side. It's on the other side of Main Street from River Street. It's on the, if the um, 
the Pup Veins building is on the left of the bridge. This property is on the right. No, I know, but uh, looking at just old reference information, both both directions are called River Street. That's what oh, really? I really say. Yeah, in the old, just looking at some older information. Oh. But it's private as far as we know on that side as well. <laughs> okay. Huh. Weird. Kaylee, that's... no different. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like it's private to the town right now. No? Just saying. Let's, um, yeah, I don't know if we can make a decision about this tonight. Do they well, what we, right what we want to decide, what, ideally what we would decide tonight is just the level of um, either we have no interest in pursuing this and tell these folks no thank you or yeah, let's let's have a look. Let's try to establish a value for the property. Let's try to you know work in you know see if the the folks who've asked to buy it would be amenable to a right away to the river and see where we get. Are we interested in doing that, or we want to say no? Uh, East Hardwick Neighborhood Association in a conversation before we made a decision about that. No, I mean it's a well, village center now, so. Do they get to, is there anything there that at least allow some other people to know about it? Yeah. So there's, I mean, it's also a fire district, which is a municipal organization. Right. Um, uh, sure. I mean, if you want to. Private, it's a private real estate transaction. Private. Right. Yeah, so we wouldn't have to do anything. It's just a, but I think Sherry's just saying we want to broaden the discussion within the East Hardwick group. But ultimate, ultimately, uh, it's, you know, there's a whole process for the, the town selling land, and it would begin with uh, us deciding that we want to move forward. So there's no, so, so, so people in general aren't using that for access for anything. There's no like nice swimming hole down there or anything like that. As far so as anybody is, knows, there's no, no public use is, of it currently. It is, it is accessed for some fishing. Um, it's kind of the only way right now to get underneath the bridge, but that it's so close to the bridge that I, I don't know if I think that would still be considered town property if it's, uh, that little path is like right next to the road. Isn't that still the town right of way if it's from the center line? So this would be kind of like beyond that anyway. So I don't. Yeah, so I, I'm not hearing any reasons why I would be against it. It seems like from my point of view, we maybe take the next step of seeing what the next step is basically. And have we, has anybody looked into it to see? I mean, sometimes we think we own stuff that's on tech map, but we don't, or like across the street or whatever. Has anybody taken that step just to double check that we actually own it? Yeah, I did a review of the deed information. So we do own the parcel the town does. Do you know how long the town has owned it? Um, yeah, hold on one second. Um, the town obtained it in uh, October of 2008. You don't happen to have uh, how much we paid for it right there, do you? We received it, and I'm trying to get some feedback. Uh, Alberta is helping me interpret. It was a probate court decision, so the previous owner, uh, basically the estate was settled, but I don't have uh, the exact detail, and Alberta is helping me just get that sorted out. Okay. It could be a situation where there were no heirs and it just was in limbo. And I, I don't know this level of detail, but I know it obtained in October of 2008 and uh, we're trying to figure out um, what were the circumstances. So would it be fair to say that, that the board's not against pursuing this? Sure. I have no problem with it. Okay. So um, would we further then direct Sean to continue gathering more information about how such a sale might happen, what the 
price might be with the restriction, like, a, you know, we want to retain a right away for the fire department and whatever. Right. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. So, Sean, you can keep pushing it forward. Yeah, and um, I did share with the board the uh, covenants of real estate as required for a municipality. So obviously, as we move forward, we'd be working in the required notices, and um, I, there's a hearing. Um, uh, check that notices would be required. Um, in a and, waiting period, right? Yeah, in a waiting period. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, not not a hearing, excuse me, right. but the, the proper notices. So I can I, I can check back in with them, and we'll go from there. Yeah, so it sounds like the board generally agrees that Sean should keep pursuing this and come back to us at a, at a later date with uh, more info. All right, great. Uh, next is item three, and we're back to the budget again. We have um, a recap of the draft budget, and we'll have the rec budget, and I think Suzanne Gann just joined for that. So. Um, uh, yes. Casey, or do was yep, right. I'm gonna so, share my screen. Okay, so I just need to save my minutes. Give me one second, I'll okay. Okay, should be all set. Can everybody see that? Yeah, I can yes. see it. Okay. Right. Okay, so um, I will let Suzanne talk about the recreation budget at first, and then we'll be going through them otherwise. So, um, so I'm just gonna well, pretend, uh, I think I the can, rec yeah, committee I can, is yeah, I can pretty much fit it. a level, a level funded budget, and uh, other than the youth program budget is decreasing, uh, based on some uh, numbers developed by Kaylee for the reach programming. Um, other than that, we'd like to maintain our budget. We realize that this year we might have a, a blip uh, where our budget isn't. You know, we're not utilizing our funds as much because of COVID, but uh, we're hoping as soon as we're out of this that we're able to utilize those funds and really planning on doing some events that are um, hoping that people are going to want to come out and, and recreate together afterwards. So would like to see some level of funding. I have a question that I just don't understand. So the green up day, the, there's a line item here for green up day, but then there's also a line item in the, uh, in the town in another spot that I don't remember where. How does that work? Because the solid waste district gives us a, an amount for green up day, does it not? They give us a revenue and maybe that's the line you're seeing somewhere else. I'm maybe uh, Casey can talk to what you're seeing elsewhere, but this is- Yes, I think um, what you're seeing is the revenue sherry not there isn't an expense line for green up yeah i'm pretty sure this is where we put all the expenses it's in revenue okay yep it's in oh. the revenue green up day grant um so anything we get from them up like the 400 dollars basically offsets the money that they spend okay. out of the recreation budget but the green up day expense is only in recreation okay okay i just didn't understand why and then the fact that it was 174 now is just because this year was so weird. Yeah, we didn't uh, have as much That's trash correct. to return. We didn't. Right. Right. We didn't really advertise very much because we were a little bit concerned right. at the time. Like, do we want big crowds? How do we do this? Are we? Right. right. <laughs> so we we played it really low key. We did have a turnout on Green Up Day, but it wasn't over the top. Right. Um, it was probably about what we wanted in a year like this. So. Okay. Okay. I just didn't understand why I was seeing it in two places and, and yeah, and that the, the grant that they give us does not cover 
everything. Yeah. Not usually. Usually we have a lot of money that goes towards tires in particular. Mm -hmm. um, this year we didn't have much in that area. So I think it's possible that we could apply to the solid waste district municipal um, that other category grant that might help us with either bulky trash or tires. It just depends on how we approach it. Um, I but, think yeah. this year, um, I believe all metals donated the roll off too. They didn't like right. charge us for that. Oh, wow. um, and we also get um, Casella allows us to take one of those roll offs to Coventry at no charge for Green Up Day. Yeah, so, so that does reduce our expenses. Cool. Okay. Any other questions for Suzanne about the rec budget? Somehow I'm in a some sort of hang on. I can't. There, now we can see everyone. All right. Actually, so. Suzanne, I do have one quick question. Um, what do you anticipate for maintenance this year now that like the playground is in place and um, you know, all the wood chips, is it like wood chips? You have to renew those each year. What I guess, um, and I know you have the porta potty would go under maintenance. Um, what else do you foresee in that category? Yeah, we've been talking about some landscaping um, at Macville and also uh, possible upgrades to the ice rink equipment. Okay. Hey, just real quick, the uh, Macfellow playground is uh, really nice. It's too bad we've had the year we had where we can't have a lot of people taking advantage of it, but the playground uh, structure just looked really nice up there at Macfellow, Suzanne, so thanks for your work on that. Yeah, you're welcome. I think it came out really good, and actually it was uh, good timing for it to be installed. Every time I went by, people were on it, and I heard a lot about, it was at the same time that the school wasn't allowing anybody on their playground, which was just a personal opinion, a real big shame uh, because people were looking to recreate outdoors and it was something that was allowed by the governor. So uh, eventually it was. Um, so it was actually good timing. Once we opened it up, it was, it was really appreciated by people. So I hope people like it. Yeah. Okay. Any, any other questions for Suzanne? All right. Thank just you, a, Susie. Just a plug for a, a new event that we just uh, released today. We're going to do a, a light it up along with the governor's uh, suggestion and uh, give prizes to folks who brighten up their houses with lights. And we'll be, do, we'll be doing a judging on December 22nd. Hmm. Wiz, I don't suppose you have any um, information about how they used to do uh, a uh, house decorating lights, the holiday thing, as I remember that my grandmother was often trying to win that prize. Just saying. But it's there been a was, long time. I think it was the Kiwanis that did it. I'm not sure. Yeah, but uh, there, there were house decoration prizes passed out. Um, we have a couple. I know this because of processing the pictures. There are pictures from the 80s of people who won the Christmas decoration prize. Huh. That's funny. Yeah. Well, that's well, exciting. You're renewing a tradition. Go for it. Yep. Yeah. They were not terribly elaborate. Uh, <laughs> uh, to enter, you, you need to hit our Facebook page and uh, post a picture and let us know that you want to be judged. So. so you'll post stuff on Front Porch Forum or something about that for people? Great. Yep, just posted tonight, so it should go out tomorrow. Oh. It's on our Facebook page. Suzanne, I, know the I don't have a Facebook account, and I have no intention of getting one. And I can't get into anybody's Facebook page without joining. That's so like, how are you going to help forum. people who are not members of Facebook but want to contribute, want to get involved in the country, in the uh, contest? Um, I'm certainly open to ideas, but I'm always open to people emailing me and saying, hey, I really want to participate. Can I send me your pick? I can post it for you. Um, front Porch okay. Forum will help a lot with that. Being on Front Porch Forum. Yeah. 
And I can always post Thank something you. like that too, Wiz, that says, hey, you know, if you're not on Facebook, let me know and I'm happy to enter for you. Yeah. Send me I, I just wanted to make sure that there had been something thought through because not everybody's on Facebook. A lot of people have actually abandoned Facebook because of their various policies. Yeah, um, it's our first time running this event, so I'm sure we haven't thought of everything, but that's a really great suggestion and we'll, we'll include something for it. Yep. Thanks, Suzanne. Welcome. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to review the whole budget, right, Casey? Or do we have new stuff? No, nope, that's it. We're going to, that we've basically been through all departments at this point. So here's the summary. <laughs> um, so. Did, were you able to add the figures that Alberta supplied this afternoon? Um, Yes, over here in the tax rate, I updated the grand list and I updated um, last year's municipal rate here. And this is what it looks like right now. And um, you got the hold harmless for um, current use? Yes, yep, okay. I updated that to um, the 163.063 right here. That's what we received just barely last week. Okay, so that was actually, yeah, so that's what we received for the 2021 budget year. And mm -hmm. so we ought to feel that that's a, at least a baseline we could count on for the following year. That's, yes, that's usually what we do is use that figure. Okay, so. So that makes the revenue look a little better. Um, so we've been through everything once at this point. I don't know how other people are feeling, but I'm feeling that that's a fairly hefty increase for a pandemic year. I have a couple little questions. Yeah, shoot. Um, you know, that may be stupid, but um, the dog license thing, you know, they're, everybody's talking about how people are getting pets and dogs and et cetera because of the pandemic and all that stuff. Um, and we seem to be going down in the dog licenses. Wouldn't we want to just stay flat with that? No? We well, I think we did 2,500 because um, in fiscal year 20, we only collected 2,000. So um, some of that may be that people weren't licensing their new dogs. But uh, do, is that because I mean, maybe because we don't have enforcement right now or do we have someone that's- We, we do, I mean, we do, we do have some enforcement. We have Dean Mercier that's oh, okay. very active. So um, yeah, we, we do have that. Um, okay. I mean, that's a thought, but- um, um, and then I, I was looking for it. Um, the solid waste district did a, uh, they lowered the fee this year, but it will go back to its regular amount next year. Um, does it, okay. do we, do you see that somewhere? I, I didn't. I think it's an appropriations. Um, Cause our, our membership fee um, or whatever per person. Yeah. Per, per cap. Yes, I did see yeah. that. I'm gonna just grab my other town report here. I believe that's under our appropriations, actually. I don't believe it's in line items. Oh wait, yes it is. Solid waste district right here. I just have that. It is here, I lied. <laughs> right here. It's right there. So 2956. So is that, is the 2956 the $4 per person or is it half of that? Or do you know what I mean? I, I, I don't know what that uh, yes. is per person, but I know that they made it, they cut it by half for- Right, so for our current fiscal year, I think they only charge just like $1,500. So, oh. right, okay. so we're assuming that it's gonna, 
we'll have you know, we'll have a savings in our current fiscal year, but right. we'll anticipate that for this fiscal budget twenty two it will go back to normal. Yeah, I think it will. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sherry, you have more. My only other one is um I know that police recruitment is both in the general government rather than in the police budget. I think it's, isn't it, um, I thought that was, uh, I so thought we moved it from the, the regular annual budget to a capital fund. Okay, so it started out in capital. Um, the auditors said it should be moved out to regular but we didn't want to take away what was built up in the capital. And um, so we do, so we basically didn't budget any in the regular right here, um, but we still have a, a fund in the general capital here that has a balance in it, um, right? Yeah, under general government. Let me get down here. Uh, right here so it does have money so yeah so it has some money and then we talked about right. whether we're going to still build that up the auditors still think it should be in the regular budget but we ended up leaving it um we um yeah we left it there for now in capital yeah because i just then didn't we, understand we hang why, on to it. why it was in the police budget why is it part of the police budget it's police expense or whatever i think because what the reason that it, that we wanted to move it down to the capital um, line, the capital fund, was because um, we didn't want to commit very much to it in any given budget year, and in order to let it build up to an appreciable level, that uh, this was at a time when Aaron was advocating for sign-on bonuses, uh -huh. and um, and he probably still is. Um, and so this was a, a kind of a compromise solution. Like we're not going to put in $10,000 a year into your annual budget, just in case you want to make an offer, but we'll put 500 bucks a year into a capital fund and then you could use okay. it if you want. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Hmm. Whatever. Yeah. I agree. Whatever. Um, uh, yeah, from an employer point of view, I think I'm not a huge fan of sign on bonuses just because no, I can't say that I am either. No, because you can try to recruit someone like that and they come for that bonus and then boy, they're looking around for the next bonus in a couple of years. And that happens to be with Omoil County Sheriff and not with Hardwick PD. <laughs> um, Sherry, do you have more? Is that it? No, I'm done. With I that. have a small list too, but I'm happy to let someone else go. I would just like to know how much we have to take out in order to move. Basically, what? how much is 1% of this budget to move it down a percent? Uh, to, so that our, uh, probably about 50 grand. 50, 60, maybe. I think. Am I right or not? No. It's 50, 57, I thought. 5,700 equal to a tenth of a percent the last time Casey and I talked. Well, we've got 116,000 was three, three and a third percent. So it looks like it'd be more like um, 40,000 would be a 1%. Roughly, or sorry, one person. No, it'd be thirty. <laughs> sorry, yes, it'd be right there. It'd be three thirty-five eighty-one, right? It'd be one percent. Yeah, thirty-five thousand. Yeah. So I think at the so, last meeting we talked about how the goal in previous years has been to keep it somewhere below three percent. Is that right? Yeah, and, and nicer if we were closer to 2%. Yeah. And I, I, my feeling is this year in particular, um, that it would be nicer if it were 
a smaller increase. Um, I guess I just, my feeling is that when May 10th hit last year, we were just entering COVID. Now we're going to have, like, by the time we hit May, May 10th next year, we're going to have lived through a year of COVID, which is, I think, and now it really feels like it's actually here um, and it's maybe having more impact. Um, I don't know. So, it's, it, so my feeling, which is not based on a lot of data, is that I'd, you know, I'd like to have see this come in a little lower this year. And I'm not usually the one to be saying that. I'm often the one to uh, um, to be like, we, you know, we shouldn't cut the budget too tight and um, that kind of thing. But this year, I feel like it would be appropriate to well, squeeze it a bit. I was looking at some of the capital funds that don't involve rolling stock. Um, you know, wondering how much would it, how much damage would it do if we were to not put in whatever it is for the cemetery upgrade? If we were, if we were to not put in that four thousand dollars, and are there other places that that are a good thing to do, and we don't want to discontinue the program, but if we don't fund it every year, tragedy does not strike. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's certainly yeah, I one. Guess that, was, um, that was one of the questions I was wondering is if um, that would be an area where you wanted to cut, like if you're looking to cut that much money, um, it's difficult with the individual departments. We've kind of combed through them and hit $250 here or $500 here, but those don't add up that quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, you could sit here all night and go through it line by line and pull a hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars there. Um, but when you're looking to cut 35,000, um, it's almost like your capital has to. Can we have a recap on that whole, um, vault door situation? <laughs> right. Sure. Um, so, um, we, um, I know Eric just got an update from Alberta, like she had had it kind of lined up to do that this year, but then COVID hit, so it didn't really work out. We have enough funds. So as of June 30th, we had about 32,000 and then we just put in, so we have about 40,000 right now. Um, we, the, we actually combined records restoration slash vault door into one fund because the vault door would be considered part of records restoration. We got a legal opinion on that from our attorney. So we combine those two categories. We have about 40,000 now. The vault door is about 20,000. In addition to that, um, all the pages that are recorded, $4 of each page is like, stat it has to go into records restoration. So for instance, in fiscal year 20, we put about $7,100 in that. So we can anticipate probably a similar amount will get added to that records restoration. Um, so, I mean, we're gonna, we, we have like 40 in there now. And so we, we may not need to add five every year. I mean, it's gonna be ongoing, but we have already started with the grant that Alberta got. Um, we have done some already. The, the company's come and done some of that already. So some of the in trim there. Hey, that is yeah. somewhere, yeah, that could possibly, yeah, that, that could be trimmed down. That could be <laughs> trimmed. Uh, alternatively, we could think about um, using that for um, digitizing more of the land records, um, because I think that the grant um, amount would not, I don't think it's enough to actually, does it bring us, it maybe brings us back 40 years? I think maybe that was the bar that was set. But yes, I think I think we got the I think we got the forty. We did, we did. And, okay. and actually, uh, folks are using that service as as of now. Oh, it's up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah. how do you find it? Yeah. On the website. Uh, I think so. Okay. Um, All right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Di different department. Sorry. <laughs> Town clerk's uh, web page. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. 
you know, that's a, I think a good thing having done, tried to do some deed research recently for that River Street issue, not the deeds themselves, but the index is like, just trying to find things is difficult. So it would be nice to have more of that done. But Alberta did say that she would get the vault door done next year. I asked her about that today. Yeah, in the spring, yes. So that we could put behind us and know that was done. And that's, yeah. Um, if folks don't mind, I may I have a few things that maybe ones that shh, like Sherry. So I'm just going to ask the question, and maybe they we don't end up doing anything. In the highway department, we have um, ninety thousand budgeted for salt, and the last actual was eighty thousand. Is there any way we could bring that down to like eighty five? Tom, are you still on the line? Because I think you and I talked a little bit about that. I mean, it's sort of anybody's guess, but. Well, as well as you know, Eric, it's crapshoot. So <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. lower it down, you know, if you lower it down, we go over, we go over. So. Right. Yeah. You know, because the year before that, I think we spent a hundred and something thousand. Yes, I believe so. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah I think it was, it was like so, 102. It was that 102, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah, it was right. I, it was icy, and the cost of salt was high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right uh, now, salt is about seventy-two dollars a ton. So right now, you know, if everything goes well, if we only do a thousand ton, you know, we spend seventy-two thousand dollars this year. But you know, wait and see on the weather. That's always a crap shoot, <laughs> Eric. You, you, I know you, it. You know, it. I do know so, it. Yeah, but we could do. We could do that, and like you said, it might get overspent, but it might not, too. Right, right. I mean, you never know, so. Right. Thank you. I, I have um, some questions on the police department budget, too. It did strike me that um, we're looking at a total, like, the net of the budget and the revenues. Um, We've got a net of about um, one hundred and sixteen thousand or something that we're that you know for the total budget, and of that, you could look and say, well, police budget's going up twenty five thousand, and we lost twenty thousand in revenue by losing the SIU grant. So, of our total increase, um, you know, that's forty five thousand of it, right there. Um, so I was wondering, like up near the top of the police budget, um, and I think I've asked this before, but the overtime, the so the salaries are up, and I think that's because we're fully staffed now, but we're still holding on to a pretty high overtime line up there. Could you scroll up, Casey? Yeah. Um, have most of the new people gone through the academy? Are they actually on the job? Yes. Um, one, the newest officer, she's still, um, I think she's doing like training. She's doing work and I don't, I don't know if she's like doing part-time academy. I'm not really sure. Aaron would have to answer that, but she is doing, you know, shifts with, yeah. So our, our, <laughs> salary like our base payroll is a hundred thousand more than our last actual right yeah because we didn't we had two vacant positions yeah mm -hmm. so it seems to me and i know i asked this last time and i know aaron's a he's he's um good about trying to manage his budget as tom is too i know these guys are good at managing to their budget but it i just wonder could we drop that 75,000 for overtime. We had it at 60 last year. Does it really need to, I know that the 75 is likely trying to adjust it to our last actual, but since our base payroll is up because we have full-time people, could we drop, do we, do we really, are we really, do we really need that much overtime? 
So I actually have a calculation. I can't really show it on my screen because it would have too much like sensitive information, employee individuals, but I actually have calculations where um, you know, you're estimating all your holidays, your vacation, your whatever. And so then you're calculating the coverage, the number of coverage hours at overtime rates to, you know, to cover those shifts. That's where that number comes from. So, and actually the, the actual number is a little bit higher than 75. So we settled on the 75. So it's, it's kind of like, formula based. I mean, we could come down on it, but we're probably going to go over then. And no, we spent 75 and just clear 20. And I did actually have Amanda give me a quarterly update on what we had spent, you know, for the first part of 21 year to date. And we're pretty well on track at that pace to, to, to be there. Okay. So. Well, okay. Um, the other thing I was looking at in this budget is, could we move gasoline line from 13,000 to 9,000? We could move it down. Um, I know we talked to, I know we talked about that last time with Aaron was that um, COVID was driving that down. Um, just because there was a period of time when they weren't really doing serious patrols um, earlier in the year. Um, mm. uh, I, I think there's okay. probably room to go down on it. Yeah, maybe maybe to like 11 or something. Let me just I would say back. Where were we on in our, what's the actual from the year before? Yeah, maybe I'm. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so the year before, yeah, the year before it was 13. Yeah. So, uh, although the price could, of gas is down. Correct, yes. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if so we want to go to nine, but we could maybe do 11 um, for a couple Let's try. thousand. Let's try um, that. Yeah. Um, I have two others highlighted. Those were just ones that you mentioned last time. And I said I would just mark them for future discussion. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember. I know I asked the question on training because... Training, he said there's a lot of new stuff coming in the pipeline. Um, 20, he felt, was just an off year. Um, I already know that there's been some... They probably spent half of their budget already this year on some firearms trainings and some other other trainings that they've had classes that they went to and such. So um, okay. I guess that was, and I think he wanted to keep it there just because he knows that there's going to be some some trainings coming up. Yeah. So it looks like the year before um, they used too well about 2300 the year before oh. yeah huh. wonder why our also looking back the year before overtime used to be 51,000 in 1819 was the less actual officers less officers this is overtime based on a full staff too like overtime for all people, I guess. And but it seems like with a full staff, you'd have less need for overtime. But. Overtime, yeah. You still have like to cover having... shifts when they have time off, though. Yeah, but if you're having the same amount of coverage, you have to cover the same amount of hours. So are they covering, are there more officers on more time? Is that what's happening? I don't believe so, but I don't feel comfortable answering that. I think Aaron would need to address that because I don't know how they do their scheduling. Yeah. So. But but you said that when you calculated out the coverage necessary, the overtime necessary to cover the shifts that are predicted. Right. You you have to look at the day, the vacation days, and the holidays and all of that, and you have to figure in coverage. And I actually had figured coverage for six officers, not eight officers, because some are working anyway. Um, so um, yeah, 
and um, yeah, so. Okay. All right. Well, it didn't get us very far. Um, I had uh, another question on the line items. Sure. So, um, we had, uh, I think I asked you this last time, it looks to me the jump from um, the 1920 actual to last year's budget and then carried forward in this year, it looks to me like the jump to include a single audit. Correct. Is that, is that And is the single audit for a particular project? We would assume Yellow Barn would need a single think, audit, yeah. So I think Yellow Barn has in its budget money to reimburse the town for a single audit. Okay, well, if that's the case, then um, that could be lowered if we can exclude the single audit for that. That's That would be the only thing I would anticipate needing it for. Sean, so. Sean do, you, do you have any recollection that would contradict my thinking there that it's in the budget for the Yellow Barn to pay for that single audit? It, it does ring a bell, Eric, but I'd have to go back and check some notes. Okay. I think you're on target. I think, I think we could drop that. We no could matter. go to 13. We could go to 13 because we could assume it's around 26 and water and sewer each pay 25% of it. So we'd be able to go to 13. Cause okay. we're at 24 this year, assuming yep. 21 yep. would be another thousand and then another thousand and twenty two. I think that thirteen would be okay there. If okay. if if the yellow barn is gonna cover the single audit, then yes, that we could do that. I think it is and should. Okay. That's right? the only grant like that I could say I mean unless we unless we got one for the bridge. Right. <laughs> Casey, I lost track. What's the what's that threshold for the single audit? I've lost track. Seven hundred and fifty thousand in expenses. So even like if you get awarded something like during a year, like if you don't, it's it's when you actually expend it, and it's seven hundred fifty thousand exceeding seven hundred fifty thousand in a year. But do you only need one single audit? So like if so let's say Yellow Barn happens as scheduled and we also um, to replace the bridge, do we just need one single audit? Correct, it's, it's you have to have a single right. audit, right? If just the town of Hardwick has a single audit, if right. we have cumulatively expenses that exceed 750,000, yes. And, and since- It's not like per project or anything. Right, that was my question, so great. So. Yeah, so if Yellow Barn pushes us over, Yellow Barn's paying for it, and if there happens to oh, be other okay. grant stuff in there, then away we go. I think we gotta run some numbers because we got Judavine, we've got the outstanding USDA, oh. uh, we've got, um, there's uh, another right, one that just right. came to mind, and I just right. lost track of it. You're right. So um, I think we gotta run some numbers. Is Judah, but right, Judavine. so Judavine, we've got VCDP and USDA, they have two. And then we've got the other 175 USDA, the one that we're trying to yeah. re, you know, reallocate. So those right there, are, but it, I mean, essentially though, I still think it would be Yellow Barn that pushed us over because even those three alone and you add in the cops grant and stuff, we would probably still be only around maybe 500 if they all came to fruition. So I, I still think it would be Yellow Barn that would put us over. It, is this last? Is this year um, the last year of the COPS grant? The one, the budget year we're working on. We have fifteen or sixteen months left, so it'll almost be done by the time this one starts. Yes. So in the following year, so not the budget we're working on, but that for next year's budget, then fiscal we're year twenty three, that'll be gone. Correct. So we'll see. That's the next other thing to keep in mind is that I am. Uh, and we could play with this a little bit, but in the in the police base salary, 
um, normally you would back out your COPS position from that um, because it's down as a separate expense. However, in order to ease that into our regular budget, once the grant runs out, I have actually, um, I didn't subtract all of it. I only subtracted a portion of it so that we're not having a great big jump one year with a, where all of a sudden there's no COPS expense, but it all moves into base salary. So we could, we could go down a little bit on that probably. On the base salary? Yes, because like I said, I didn't back out the entire COPS grant position simply to ease it into the budget because eventually yep. it's going to all be in base salary and not in COPS, if that, if you, if that makes sense. It does. So how much is in there now that's um, easing? Um, I'm just going to stop my share for a sec because I need to go to another tab. So and sure. I, it has sensitive information. So, okay, just going to go over here and take a look. Okay, so what I what I did was so the cops grant pays seventy five percent of that salary. I subtracted only twenty thousand. So um, we could do so rather than like I said subtracting the whole um, say it's let's say it's fifty thousand. I didn't subtract fifty thousand. I only subtracted twenty, so that it's not as much of a hit when the next budget rolls around and we have to put the whole position into base salary. Yep, got it. But, so, but so there's like so okay. essentially. I mean, I could. I mean, we could we could go down. I mean, we could add that back in for this. Sh I mean subtract it for this year and but and it's um, a big hit next year yep yeah i guess that's the only thing or, or maybe we could probably do ten thousand less to sort of split it up that's i've just been trying to ease that into the budget because we don't yep. want it to be a big hit one year yep but there's but what you're telling us is there's about thirty thousand that the the base salary is padded up about thirty thousand this year in this budget correct mm -hmm. yep yeah. There's uh, there's some additional information on the single audit case. I found some uh, email exchange that we had from the summer, and we had NBRC at two hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. That's for Yellow Burn, right? That's I believe the cops was fifty. Uh, Bridgman Reservoir is a factor as well. Right. So in in fiscal year so. twenty, we didn't need a single audit because we we were close for like six ninety nine or something, but we we didn't need one. And depending on when Yellow Barn comes to fruition, we may or may not need one in 21, but by 22, I would say that probably Yellow Barn will be happening then. Right, actually, so let me just, yeah, let me just think. So we're gonna be spending Yellow get, I was trying to, I was trying to find that, Eric, and I just couldn't find it. I'm looking as we're talking for Yellow Barn. Yeah, so Yellow Barn's gonna be spending down money starting uh, in the grant money, I think, is going to be starting October of 21 through October of 22. So most of it is going to be in that. Um, in, this, in this budget, fiscal year 22. Yes. Yep. 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 And that's going to be, that's going to easily put us over into single audit territory. And I, I'm pretty sure that's in the budget for Yellow Barn, although I'd have to verify that. All right, so so we could potentially we have some room in police department base salaries. Um, uh, yeah, I just had a couple. I would others. suggest we don't do if we do it. We maybe do it by like ten thousand, just because we don't want to see a great big jump in the following year as we ease that in. So. Kaylee, are you raising your hand or? Yeah, I just want to make a general comment. I think it would be great to get the police budget below a million if we can, or at least close to a million. And to Eric's comment earlier, I think if we can get below 3%, um, that, 
that would be awesome too. It sounds like there might be some wiggle room there, Casey. Um, and then if there are any other places we were talking about earlier where we're potentially padding, if that is a way to um, pad a little bit less for this year, I know that that has implications in the future. We don't generally want to do that as a rule of thumb, but it might save us from cutting, cutting things that we may need. We, we, KC is uh, with departments. Uh, we've really looked at this really closely. So I, I don't. I guess I'm going to just say this. I don't want it being put back on us to you know completely solve finding this one percent. We really need to just have the group involved here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the I feel like that's the exercise we're in right now. Yeah, understood. Um, I had. A couple other things that I thought were possible um, in the back in the line items. Uh, we have a big old increase for our capital road contribution. Um, mm -hmm. It's 25,000 increase and I know what's driving that. I know that it's we're trying to brace ourselves for paving, paving center road, which is going to be really expensive. Yeah, this, cause um, this is what it looks like. Yeah, so but um, but I you know we could consider not contributing quite as much um, you know okay and I have I'll just run through the other ideas I had so I thought about bringing that down instead of putting twenty five thousand more in there to bring it um, to just put in twenty thousand more. So bring it down five grand. I also wondered about, I mean, again, this is a lot like um, the, the salt thing, but we have a hazard mitigation line for 7,000. I thought about maybe bringing that down to five. Again, that's playing with, you know, it's just rolling the dice because that's what we usually use if we have to clear ice out of the river. Some years we have to do it and some years we don't. And we could gamble that maybe we don't need all 7,000. Um, what else did I have? I just want to, I, I made the 5,000 roads and the hazard mitigation. Just want to see where we're at now. Can you, what, can you share that? Yep. Um, 2.76, we're making some progress. Um, we have, we also- I can't see your screen, Casey. Oh, yeah. that's why I forgot I stopped screen share for a minute. Let me go back, I'm sorry. Eric, are we just, uh, are, 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 is the uh, objective uh, with some of the discussion now is just we're attempting to find 1%? Yeah, I mean, it. it's not magical 1%, but you know, if we could get our tax increase under 3%, I think that would be much more palatable. So, I mean, there's another way you can go about this, just how many line items do we have and, you know, run the math and just right across every line item, let's, you know, get that, you know, just whatever that is, you know, 50 bucks right across the line items, maybe gets us there or whatever that number is. That's true of everything. Because, um, uh, you know, what I recall from previous discussions about budgets is, you know, we don't want to get into this exercise where we're taking eight hours to critically review every line item, right? Right. Yeah, right. Um, the information from Alberta about the grand listen about the tax rate, um, has she heard yet from the state? Because I'm one of those people that gets... Um, that has a low enough income that I have a, uh, the homestead thing is, uh, plays you, in. And those, those yeah. letters still haven't come out yet, adjusting our tax rate. Um, did, did she get that information yet from the state? Because it was way behind. And as far as I know, she still doesn't have it. So I wonder if we're even working with the like the real thing. I know that we never have the grand list amount until like March or May or something like that anyway, and we're always guessing at it, but I just wonder whether 
and she's not here, so we can't ask her. So I don't know. I'll call her tomorrow. Yeah. She didn't mention anything about that, and I didn't. I only asked her about um, mm -hmm. the couple, couple things. Um, I, have a I have a quick question. Good. To your point, Sean, um, I'm just looking at the budget summary for all the different departments, um, and it looks like there are two departments in particular that are um, that are higher, which is office expenses and line items. Could we take those two departments and essentially um, do what you're saying, take out, like split it across each line item to get that percentage down to 3%? And would that, um, would that then be enough to bring our percentage down in total? Sorry, why, why were you looking at those two in particular? Tell because so in the budget summary, yeah. Um, in the budget summary, those are the two that are the highest increase. So there are actually quite a few departments that are lower. Oh, police, police is higher than office expenses. And it's twenty three thousand seven hundred police and twenty two thousand. Yeah, what I was advocating is not necessarily trying to get where Casey is now on these uh, departments. I was not saying that we need to have these. Uh, these increases aligned in that uh, F column. What I was saying is looking at everything above and just right across the board, apply, apply a variable to get this 30, to find this 36,000 we're looking for. Well, we're looking for less than that now because we, we think we've, I've already done maybe 15,000 or more. Casey, I think you went into a tunnel. Yep. Oh. Can't hear you. Now. Mm, now, you're you're very far away. Really? Yeah, we can just barely hear you. <laughs> I think you were saying that um, you you have made some of these adjustments that we just talked through, and that's changed our situation somewhat. Um. I know, so I know this is not the direction you were steering, Sean, but I did have a couple other things that I did kind of poke through the whole thing line by line today. And a couple of things that I thought of were that we are adding brand new expenses for the 911 signs and for the um, equity committee. We have those both in there. And I think, Kaylee, you were going to and work on the um, budget for what that would equity committee money would be used for. Yeah, I'm gonna bring that to the next meeting, Eric, because we have a meeting on Monday. Okay, all right. I mean, I know both, both those things are important things, but um, they're just, you know, new additions to uh, maybe, we could put off something. Um, and then the only other thing I, that caught my eye is, and maybe I'm off base, but in the library budget, the custodial services line is like $9,300, which is comparable to the memorial building, which is 98, police is 58. Um, and I just did, does anybody know if that, number for the library is where we need to be for seems like on a square f i don't know if it's a square footage basis or not really that's that's um that's based on the uh addition yeah casey i don't we can't hear you casey um but uh, what the, the we Casey did check in with Lisa um, on this particular one, so I believe that number is good. Okay. Can I ask yeah. a follow up question to that? Yeah. So that custodial line item is assuming that the so that for the July one of next year, that would be for the full year of the building being complete. It's just is a portion of the year. So that 9,300 is just a portion of the custodial for the year? Yeah, that, that, does, that seems high, doesn't it? 
interesting because I said, well, is the construction, when is it going to be done? And, um, but she said that this was for like six months and I'll, so yeah, I'm not sure. Did you get that, Eric? Yeah, that she said it was for six months, but. That's, that's what they said. Cause I also wondered why it was such a big increase if, cause the construction is going to be, you know, probably not done until halfway through this fiscal budget. So, yeah, all right, maybe it just is what it is, but those are, um, yeah, okay. Another option that I think we have that I hesitate to use, but I think, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, I think we would have the option to, um, and basically assume that we're going to draw down our our um, our fund our, our reserve our fund balance a little bit and it's a kind of a extreme option to take because um, because it it sort of falsely lowers you can't do it forever and it in it lower you're just using some of your savings to pay for some of your annual expenses um, but on the other hand the purpose of maintaining the fund balance is sort of a rainy day fund and i don't know maybe it's a rainy day um, maybe i've forgotten how this works that would not surprise me one bit but there was there was one year um a f quite a few years ago probably eight or so where there was a lot of discussion about the library and whether or not they could pull, do they have a separate fund balance of some sort? And maybe yeah. um, some of these added expenses for them could actually go into that place because they're, uh, they have a different sort of standing as a municipal library. No? Am I yeah. wrong? Yeah, there it is in the bottom if they have a fund balance of almost 5000 and we that you was are, as of 630 so you are correct sherry in the past so i, I believe that used to be bigger and we used to short fund them causing that fund balance to go down right and and it seems like we could we could do that. We could do that. Part of it to cover some of these extra that have really bumped it up. Um, I mean, I I don't like that. I don't like doing that because I know that they haven't. Um, or my understanding is they haven't really like figured out exactly all the interior. Um, uh, you know, like costs of the all of the interior stuff for the new addition. But um, my assumption is that going forward, they're going to continue to work to uh, get grants or get get other su uh, support for those things, some of those things as well. I mean, I wouldn't want to clean it out, but it seems like we could um, use some of it because it's there. Two, maybe? Yeah, I mean, the, the difference in custodial expenses would be, would be almost perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. Mm. Hey, so the, the difference in custodial expenses is going to be there next year as well. Yeah, yeah the, next there's year. sort of the same logic about that as there is about the COPS grant. Right. E easing it in, yeah. But I have no problem pulling stuff out of our own fund balance. Again, you know, this is probably the rainiest day that we're going to live through in our memory and it seems like we have a rainy day fund that maybe sh we should should pull one percent or of this budget out of it 
and just let the town know. That's why we why we collect this money so that we can respond in an emergency. Yeah. Um, just another, you know, note and why we're trying to push this down. Sean has said that he heard that the the state is predicting a, I guess, an average increase of the school tax. It's more like nine percent. Kaylee's yes. nodding. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, given that on our tax bills, that's something like sixty percent of the tax bill is education. Mm -hmm. That has a bigger effect on the tax bill than anything we do here. But better not to be additive, better not to like, <laughs> you know, add our increase to theirs. So did you, so we're looking at the summary again, Casey, you're showing us the summary. Did you take anything out of the police um, base salary or not? No, I can do I can do ten thousand for right now. Um, that helped like twenty seven basis points or so, I think. So yeah. making a little progress. Casey, is that just, progress. Casey? Make sure that does that is workable, right? I mean, we don't want to we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot here. That's workable. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And she said it was padded up by 30, so. Yeah. Something it down 10 is, still leaves it padded up by 20. And below 2.5% seems pretty, pretty close to what we were working towards, right? Yeah. Um, it's too bad that the increase in revenue doesn't, you know, is, is so low. Um, and keep in mind, um, so assuming that the police department's budget is lower, that's going to change our revenue because the Greensboro contract is presumably going to be based on a percentage. So that would lower our revenue as well. Mm, yes, by, by $2,400 actually. Gotta get up there. Hold on. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing here. So there might be some more ticketing moving forward. <laughs> How long did you live in the South? <laughs> There's certainly opportunity for it. Just visited there, and I know I know you keep within the speed limit in the south. <laughs> um, wow! So when you did that, our, our oh no, that's I gotta fix that because I forgot that um, it's not straightforward. It's the budget, and then it's um, plus capital um, plus public safety minus dispatch. So yeah, it's only gonna be a difference. It would be a difference of. 2400 from what it was right. so yeah yep. um so there we go okay so I don't know what is all right is everybody sick of this for tonight yep okay anybody okay. really want to stay with it I mean, you know, I mean, I think we're progress. How could you tell? Okay. All right. So let's leave it here for now. We have, um, uh, the only other thing I wanted to say during this section is Alberta is, um, I think she's going to come to us, or I think it's the first meeting in January that she's going to bring to us. Um, options for town meeting, um, I think, is when we're going to have that discussion with her, right? That, that sounds right, Eric. Because we have the option to do it all um, on Australian ballot, and it's, um, as you might imagine, it would, it would be one wicked long Australian ballot. 
So um, anyway, so she'll come then. So uh, we, we, yeah, we wouldn't need to have our budget totally finalized before then. Pretty close to that date though. Yeah, but we can leave it for tonight. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Casey, for displaying everything and making those changes on the fly. Um, next up is um, item four, select board to discuss newspaper of record for the town. So this is something that came up or whenever we post notices, um, state statute says we have to post them in a newspaper of record. It's quite clear and apparently as of now it's not considered okay that that newspaper is online. So Hardwick Gazette is not our newspaper of record. Um, oh. So we need to have a newspaper of record. And I guess I would propose that we also continue to um, put the same notices in the Gazette that we would, that we're gonna have to now put somewhere else because even though the Gazette can't be our newspaper of record, I think it really effectively is what people are gonna look at. So um, it's gonna be like a double posting and maybe, I don't know, you know, for some things probably Sean's office would look to also post things in the on front porch forum like he's been doing additionally. So that's yeah, and for the good of the conversation, um, uh, we, you know, we continue to advertise with the Gazette. It's just certain legal notices, you know, such as uh, votes for bonding, uh, hearings, yeah, tax sales, things like this. Uh, just, yeah, again, for the record, you know, we're trying our best to support our local paper here. So for a newspaper of record that's actually in print, the closest ones that come to mind are the News and Citizen out of Morrisville and the Caledonia Record, right? Yeah. Correct. Casey, uh, What's the I asked difference you, in their advertising oops, rates? Excuse me. That's what I was just going to say to Casey. We were checking in on this earlier. Um, I'd have to look it up. I tend to, um, I almost think the weekly might be a little less than the daily, but I, I'd honestly have to look at some recent invoices to compare prices. I don't know off the top of my head. I think both of those papers are weekly. So. The no, the Caledonian record is six editions a week, I believe. And then News and Citizen is every Thursday. Okay, yeah, I had the, chron the Chronicle in my mind, the Spartan Chronicle, which is a weekly. But oh. News and Citizen is a free paper, no? Yes, that's correct. So, hmm. More people get it. I, that was my, that was the, the theory that I was developing. But I can't say that I personally read it, but I do get it. It works really well for starting fires too. <laughs> makes that it comes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I see that Ray is on the call. Does he have anything to offer or Doug? I don't know. Does it matter? I don't know. Not, not really. I was instructed to be here by Dawn in the newsroom in case there were some questions that needed to be answered. Oh. Uh, I, I covered this uh, issue with Sean in September, and he said, uh, you know, it has to be a printed paper. And for as far as I'm concerned, that, that closed the topic for us. If, if we were to go back to print, we'd be out of business. So uh, that's, that's not in the offing. Um, we're, by stopping printing, we have reduced our losses considerably. But um, yeah, it's, it's you know, you know, based on uh, the understanding that we have to be in print, we're not really part of this discussion, unfortunately. So we will, I mean, as previously stated, we still want to be posting stuff in the Gazette. Can I offer one other thing for Ray and uh, Ray, that is, um, this is something that maybe you want to touch, you know, check in with the representatives if there's something they want to take up in this legislative session, because it's not unique to the Gazette. We've got other papers and publications having to do the same thing. So just for what it's worth, maybe we want to pick this up with your representatives and say, we well, guys consider making a change that's, that would allow for a di point. digital edition. Yeah, that's, that's a good point because there are a number of, of papers like ours that have gone digital only. And then there are a number of papers have gone out of business. So uh, good point. Thank you, Sean. So 
newspaper of record, do we want to pick one? Or do you want to wait and come back to what's cheaper? I would like more information about the ad rates before making a decision. I don't think we have anything in advance of the December 17th meeting that would be, uh, you know, critically driven by this discussion. So I think we could get Casey could double check some numbers and uh, Casey's just sound right. We could get numbers back for the meeting on the 17th. Um, yeah, actually, if you give me a second here, um, I could actually pull up accounts payable and look at like the CBC ad that we put in both places and just see what it, I, I could just look at that one ad and there was another ad that we put in both. So I'll pull them up as a vendor real quick here and just see. Were you able to get any of that? Yep. Yeah, you, your volume increases as you speak. Okay. Curious. I got to. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I got a mess. I got a message that said my internet connection was unstable. So I'm like, okay, hopefully you heard me. All right. Well, while we're waiting for the numbers, just one thing I want to say that I think there is some, you know, basically the same thing that Sherry said. I think there's some benefit to the paper um, that actually shows up in Hardwick already. I assume because it shows up, the News and Citizen probably does get read more, even if it's um, not all the time. You don't have to be a subscriber that it might actually get seen more. So I'd be inclined to just say News and Citizen would be a good idea since we're going to continue with the Gazette anyway. Let's just do the news and citizen. Yeah, I'd agree with that too. Is that a motion? Sure. Why not? Sherry sure, made a motion. Yeah. I'll second it. And Lucian made a second. Wow. Uh, we should we should check our numbers here, is my observation. Well, we can have that during discussion. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like, so on the CDC advertising, um, the Caledonian record, I think I ran it twice and it was $186. And then um, the News and Citizen would have been also, two, I think, two weeks for like 135 So it does seem like they're cheaper. I retract my comment. Um, <laughs> Oh, good. Now we got that. We got that info. Uh, any more discussion on uh, the motion is to establish the News and Citizen as our newspaper of record for posting notices. Hearing no more discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. I think everyone voted aye. So that's Wiz, Kaylee, Sherry, aye. Lucian, me. So there we go. News and Citizen it is. Thank you. Next is item five, select board to sign off on uh, CWSRF. Um, this is the state revolving fund is the last water, clean water state revolving fund. Step two, yes. plan loan application for the wastewater treatment facility improvements. So we have some, uh, Sean must have some paperwork for us that's come in to keep this process moving along. Yeah, we have the um, uh, we have the what's referred to as the step two application. So we have that completed. Um, that um, let's see. I'm pretty sure I put that in the Google Drive, right, Casey? It's there. I put the whole application there, and it, Aldridge and Elliot has already reviewed it and sort of given their blessing for it. And it just has to be, you know, signed off by the select board. And we'll go ahead and submit that. Um, yeah. Do we have to actually sign sign it, or yes. can we? No. So um, page twelve is looking for signatures. So um, 
I don't know how we'll do that, but I have something else for you guys to sign from a previous meeting. So maybe we could coordinate at the beginning of the week to meet up at the office and get a few things signed. I don't know if that works for people or not, but. If I need to shepherd it around, Casey, I can do that. Okay. Or if there's a way for you to, to just put it, you know, so that we don't all have to come and group up together. If you, it could be somewhere where we could sign it. Whistle. I'm okay with that. Just saying, we're what, open. What about, uh, is it, yeah, that would work. Okay. Works for me. So it's in the Google Drive, Sherry. Are you able to just print? I actually have it there as the signature page. So maybe if you're able I can to print, just it. print that. Okay. I could print it to help here, okay. Casey, and get it to Sherry so she doesn't have to deal with it. Cool. Okay, and I have another form that I wanted them to sign too. So I'll send that to you, Sean. So yeah, okay. and for the board, just make sure you are looking at the uh, complete app just to get you know get the understanding on this, and then we'll leave the uh, we'll leave the signature page um, with Sherry. And Great. then uh, there's there's one other item here too, right, well, Casey? So before sorry, we go move ahead. on, though, maybe we could have a just a vote so that's in our minutes that we yeah we do need that to this. yes yep definitely need that. <laughs> So if somebody could make a motion that we uh, move forward with the step two application for the wastewater treatment facility. So moved. Second. Any discussion on it? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that was everyone. I saw Wiz, me, Kaylee, Sherry, and motions I heard. So good. All right, and then the other thing that is related to this is what? Is to authorize Sean to sign off on the engineering services agreement oh, right. um, with Aldridge and Elliott once it's approved by the state. Because yep. it's been sent to them. And so it's just pending their approval. But that way we don't have to wait until the 17th if you could do it now. It's been sent to the state. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, you know, obviously. <laughs> for the state uh, clean water state revolving fund staff to review. But presuming it will come back prior to your next select board meeting, if you'd be able to give Sean the authorization to move forward with that. I move that we give Sean the authorization to move forward with the um, whatever with engineering. it is. Engineering, <laughs> engineering, <laughs> engineering, engineering services agreements. Agreement. Yeah. Second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 I think that's everyone again, right? Amaze. Okay, that's everybody. Great. Awesome. Um, select board reports. I'll give a short yellow barn one, which is we, we're still moving along. Yellow barn's waiting to hear back from uh, uh, we have a grant application into the Northern Borders Regional Commission for a grant that's competitive across the whole Northern or North, at least the Northeastern section. So it's fairly competitive, but hoping that we're in good position. We also just met with Vermont Community Loan Fund, who's very interested in um, filling the final um, financing gap. So pretty big progress there. Um, and we'll know about the NBRC grant by the end of the month. Any other? Mm, the townhouse has begun its annual appeal. Uh, we're working on a little capital campaign for the for the um, project that is hopefully going to get started sometime next fall, depending on the grants that we line up. Um, it was good news that the Paul Brune, uh, the Preservation Trust Paul Brune grant, uh, they extended their deadline to, uh, now I can't remember when, December something, mm -hmm. 17th or something. Sean, you don't remember, do you? Anyway. Um, yeah, yeah mid-January. Uh, mid oh, maybe sorry. January 17th. So, um, yeah, so sounds right. And we're uh, looking at combining the roof, the needed roof repair with that, because that's one of the things that that 
particular fund likes to um, fund. So, um, yeah, Great. that's all that's happening a lot and nothing at all. Any other select board reports? New business or old business? I did check the uh, uh, Downs, Ratclin, and Martin website, and they are uh, they are they haven't made an adjustment, so they are showing the balloon test for Saturday, December five, from nine until one p.m. with the backup of Sunday. And I'm going to give you the most current uh, NOAA weather forecast I can find, just updated as of I think seven uh, seven o'clock, and it says for Saturday for the Hardwick location, a 50% chance of snow after two, but up until then, partly sunny with a high near 37 light and variable winds. So it looks like it, you know, Saturday yeah. might be conducive. So it seems to be lining up right now. All right, get your cameras ready. Kaylee. Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, ask a couple of questions about um, the AT&T project, not big questions. One was, and Sean, you might have more information on this, but, um, and I haven't looked at it myself, but as, as far as I've been told, right now, the public can put a public comment on the PUC website, but it is just for the extension until this Friday, and then it will be open for general comments. Is that, um, correct <laughs> to your knowledge <laughs> you have me a disadvantage i'm not sure um my understanding with the uh, process of the public comment being extended um I, i'm at a disadvantage i do not know the answer to the question sure yeah no I'm, i didn't mean to put you on the spot i was just i just wasn't sure if you had more information um about that um so it, but it does sound like if if that's the case, if somebody in the community decides to write public comment and it's just for the extension, then um, then there will be an opportunity to provide general comments. Um, it sounds like as soon as that's processed. Um, so I was just. So are you saying there's actually public comment period for the extension? Correct. That's what oh. that's what my understanding is. Wow, that's a lot of process. <laughs> it's a lot of public comment. A lot of process. <laughs> process. All we asked was more time for public comments, and now we have to have public <laughs> comments on the request for more public comments. Okay. Um, and there is a, a group, Friends of Buffalo Mountain, that is formed to help anybody with making public comment. Um, there's been lots of front porch forum flurry about that, but there. It sounds like there are some community members. It's a it's fairly complicated because it is a state website. So if anybody needs help figuring out how to do that, it sounds like there's a group there to help. Um, and um, their email is friends of Buffalo Mountain at and it's the back part that's kind of tricky. Um, it's at igc.org. So not Gmail. <laughs> um, so I just want to mention that. And then I also had a question at the last like we're meeting that we talked about this. We mentioned having a special meeting or more of an informational meeting where potentially at and could be there to um, answer questions about the documentation that they've provided to the select board. Um, if we have uh, the meeting on the 17th and then the meeting on the 7th it seems like we might want to schedule a special meeting uh, sooner rather than later if that is in fact what we would like to do um i know we talked about this last time but can you remind me why we want to have a special meeting well it was brought up that there was a lot of information that is on the town website and is information that we've been talking about that um might be beneficial to have just um, an opportunity for community members to dig into that a little bit more and ask more questions about it. Um, and th there was a emergency planning commission meeting about about this and there's a lot discussed at that meeting and um, 
I just wasn't sure. It's just something that had come up at the meeting and I didn't know if it was something that the select board necessarily needed to organize or if it could be something that the planning commission or a different, um, maybe even AT&T could potentially host it. Um, maybe they could, it seems more likely that it would happen if, if either we did or the planning commission did. Um, comments, thoughts from others? Crickets. I did, I have heard um, just this afternoon that East Montpelier is also um, struggling with a very similar issue uh, with AT&T wanting to build a tower that uh, doesn't seem to have much reach to anybody, but um, yeah. So their select board was discussing it tonight also, and they've also gotten an extension and uh, they have quite a few people who are not interested in seeing that happen on Route 14. Just saying. Hmm. And I think, Eric, the special meeting, the, the purpose of that was to inform the community um, and to provide an opportunity for community members to ask questions and get answers to those questions. It could potentially be the kind of thing that we organize as the select board but then invite AT&T similar to our last meeting but in a more but <laughs> in a specific focus on that where they could really answer some of those some of those questions um, and maybe as well maybe Kristen or the Planning Commission could answer some of the environmental questions as well so it was just something that came up um, and I'm just a little you know there's not that much time um, before January 13th so if we were able to get something like that on the books um, for either before our January 7th meeting or before the 17th meeting, it seems like that might be really good for the community. Let's do December 31st. <laughs> um, and I'm, I would be happy to reach out if it makes sense, I don't know, um, to at and to just see if it's something that they'd be interested in because I feel like they can answer a lot more of the questions around coverage and things like that then um, so I'm happy to help with that if that makes sense um, I'm just wondering Janelle that we would talk with sorry Casey did you say something oh I just um, that it would be Janelle that we would work with if we were going to do something like that, probably because she's their rep. Yeah, or, or um, uh, Beth from downtown. She seemed to have um, Beth seemed to have ready to present a bunch of stuff last time, and we didn't end up having her do that. Um, I'm just wondering. Um, I, I, the, if, since the, so I had thought we might hear back um, in a more formal way from the planning commission because we had talked about at our last meeting, maybe um, trying to have uh, something of a uh, united front town response. But um, my understanding is the planning commission um, has decided to go ahead and file as an intervener for intervener status. Um, I haven't followed up on that to see if they have, but that's that's correct statement. Um, so it's correct, I, Eric. Yeah. So I and they were that was the body that was going to review the proposal as against the town plan. Um, so I guess I'm wondering if it might if we ought to at least coordinate with them. Yeah, and I, so to my knowledge from being at that meeting, it sounds like the planning commission is going to be sending the select board something after their meeting on the 7th. Um, oh, okay. After next Monday, that'll be, that would be either a letter or something a little more specific. Um, so I think absolutely waiting until seeing, um, seeing what that is makes sense. Um, it's just with the holidays, time is going to go by very quickly. Um, 
So if there were to be, and, and Casey, I think absolutely just inviting, just talking to Janiel and seeing is this something that they, that even maybe she could do um, would, would be great. So are you volunteering, Kaylee, to follow up on this and, and, and uh, figure out what we should do? Or are you saying we should schedule something now? I think that was yeah, your thing, right? Yeah, I mean, either, either way, I don't know if it needs to be a special meeting of the select board or if it should just be us saying, hey, Janiel, could AT&T host something and we can use and we can promote it on the town website. Like, it, and I, I don't actually have like a, I don't know exactly what uh, is the best route other than I think that it would be really great to have a longer, more focused period of time where the community can ask specific questions of AT&T about their proposal. And I'm happy to volunteer to help with that, um, Sean and Casey, if that makes sense. Yeah, with the information at hand, um, we're assuming the, uh, um, you know, we have the uh, request for the extension on the comment period. Uh, the, the legal technicality here is, is that the decision from the Public Utility Commission is still uh, not issued. I'm checking right now in the motion status uh, for extension of comment period. The, uh, the way it's listed now under motion status is pending. Um, I did check with the clerk um, uh, last week, or excuse me, the, one of the attorneys uh, involved uh, last week and asked, you know, did, we don't see this actual decision. He said, no, the, the, um, the actual PUC uh, personnel would be the ones that would give you this final um, uh, clearance, if you will. Uh, and then the more important point here is assuming the motion um, to receive comments is, is received, we, we effectively only have up until January 13th to be providing comments, no matter who we are. So that, that's it just for, you know, as far as our timeline is concerned here. From what I've heard the, that the, you know, especially when both parties are agreeing to it, that the extending the comments is pretty routine for them to do. So I think, I think we can kind of operate on the assumption that that's going to happen, I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Um, but just bear in mind that we don't have that, you know, final determination. Right. I, I hear you on that. So would it make sense then if someone would ask, just send an email to maybe Janiel and Beth together and say, would you guys be willing to host an informational session for Townsfolk? Is that something that you want to take? Kaylee said she could take that unless Sean, you feel like that comes needs to come out of the town manager's office. I'm fine taking the lead, but I'm just wondering how it jibes with, um, uh, uh, you know, what the planning commission is doing on the subject matter right now. You know, yeah. I don't want to have it all of a sudden that, okay, the select board's going to meet, the planning commission's going to meet, and oh, by the way, at and going to meet. You know, it's going right. to be a disjointed process. So whatever your preference is. Maybe, Sean, we could just email Janiel and Beth to say, if we were to do an informational session with at and before December 31st, what are some dates that would work for you? So that way um, we have that information and then can say, after we hear from the planning commission, great. Um, My observation maybe, is that at the last round of this, sorry, Eric, go ahead. I was going to say maybe include Kristen at least on that as well so that the Planning Commission is tied in. In some ways, I wonder about scheduling because it's, um, I, mean, maybe, I think we've already hit on this a little bit, but we have our next meeting on the 17th. And if we do it after that, really any time until the 4th is kind of almost all holidays. And I guess we could squeeze it in after the 17th before Christmas holiday, but it's still really sort of getting into it. And so it's, it's a little bit hard. And do, scheduling it before next, the 17th is a little, I mean, I guess we could do it in one week notice, but that's still a little tight. So I'm not sure about scheduling. I mean, in some ways, I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm not, I don't have a strong opinion about it. I'm just arguing for maybe having it at the next select board meeting, actually. Oh, I guess. <laughs> You don't like that. <laughs> it just sounds like a marathon session again. I'd, I'd rather have it be a standalone if yeah. possible. 
Okay, I'm definitely not against it. I was just, just pointing that out. Okay. And, um, and I, guess, I guess that would be maybe an argument for trying to at least set a tentative date tonight. Yeah. Because the time is ticking. So the 25th is a date that a lot of people are going to be sitting around at home and not visiting relatives. And a lot of people won't be working. I think it could be perfect. Yeah, captive audience, I'm sure. Yeah. So we are going to have the, uh, assuming the balloon test goes forward, um, they're going to have more you know, information in regards to the uh, uh, you know, simulation photos, the updates. Uh, just thinking out loud now. Um, you know, I could just grease the skids a little bit and say, look, when are you guys anticipating having you know, that updated uh, information ready for viewing and, you know, to get some feedback from community members and have that be the lead into you know, I need to, we got to get a read from the select board now about your, you know, are we going to try to pin down some special date and then see how it aligns with what the planning commission has in mind. So if we're, I, okay, here's what I'm hearing that, that we think that it would be a good idea to have a public session. We'd like AT&T to be there. We want to have it happen after the balloon is up. So we have that information because that's, probably happening Saturday. We probably should be hearing from the Planning Commission on the 7th, it sounds like, or they're going to meet at least. So um, it sounds to me, like, and, and we're not talking about scheduling a select board meeting. This is an informational meeting about um, a particular project. So um, we could just say, we could just agree that hey, we're going to need to have a special meeting. Let's wait until um, the balloon thing happens. We see what the planning commission does. And, and let's have, and in the meantime, Sean can check with AT&T and just say, hey, we'd like to host some sort of um, community uh, information session with you um, after these things happen and then get it on the, just put it back and Sean to, to find a date that's going to work. Yeah, that. So are, are they still waiting for the select board to say okay for using the road or are we, we've gone so far past that point? Is yeah, we have. Why I can't just make a motion and say that no, they can't use the road and then we can you, just move on. You, you can if you want. Second. <laughs> can't use the trail. No. <laughs> Sherry's making a motion that they, all right. And I don't know. I mean, why can't, uh, yeah. We can. Did they, the, at some point, it seems like it went so far beyond that because they never, we never uh, had any clear understanding that they can actually do it, you know? And then they left it, then they just moved on. Like, like they no longer needed to have an answer from us. They just moved on and did their thing. So. Why can't we just say, you know what? No, you can't use the road. Uh, it's, yeah. It's a public highway. I don't think you can say that. You can, you can deny permission to improve it. You can, they can use it. I agree with Sean. We can't deny their, we can't deny them the ability to pass on a public but highway. But they can't change it, which is we what they want to do. We can deny their permission. We can deny permission to yeah to upgrade it, mm -hmm. and and that's something that um, that we could do. That we could do. And and that discussion got tabled. Let's not forget. Since we heard this initial presentation, and shortly thereafter, we are still waiting to hear that they can meet the HED construction standard. We've right. gotten so, a verbal they can, but we don't see it in writing as of yet. Yeah, so it just seems like we've had to spend all this time on this and they've yeah. never met our one requirement. So, which, which was that they would need to show that they could meet those, um, you know, the HED guidelines or whatever you want to call them. I just, yeah, I. I guess I just, I don't understand how they get to just pass up that. That seems like a big step. 
Um, so I don't, I don't think they, they, they don't get to pass it up because they, uh, at least legally, they need our permission to make changes on any town road and including a town trail. Yeah. A legal but trail they could be working on the assumption that they're going to go forward with this whether or not we give them that permission you'll go in a different route and arrange for rights of way and and improvements for a series of private properties so their strategy is to just go forward assuming they're going to be able to do it maybe on the trail and maybe some other way that the two really are not inextricably linked. So I, uh, yeah, I'd be inclined to say, let's simplify it for them and tell them that they're not going to do it on our trail. I like that. They can't, they can't touch the trail. The trail is what it is. If they can't do it without, you know, they just, they can't do anything to that trail except for, except for walk on it and enjoy the, the scenery. Kaylee. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I was just going to say that the simplicity of that is mind boggling, Sherry. Um, <laughs> it's like sometimes when you're like thinking about something for so long and you're like, oh, I can just turn left. Well, it's um, just no. But um, I do think that we should think about it before making a decision tonight. Um, so we could always add that as an item to our next agenda or make the motion on our next agenda to uh there are just some things personally that i would want to think about in terms of if that were the case what might what might um the decision to have a different road look like or different access look like in terms of the environment in terms of um, a lot of different things so i think we should wait for the balloon test to happen and um but i don't feel comfortable making that decision tonight, unfortunately. I think it's a great idea, but I just want to think about it a little bit more. That's fine. So, yeah, so we're done for tonight, but, you know, and it can be part of this public, you know, meeting that occurs later, you know. Well, our, our decision us, doesn't have to be. To make that decision, you know, and we can listen to it and see what we do, but. For the good of the conversation, um, I think uh, uh, you know the intent is that uh, there are going to be comments coming from the board as a part of this process. We're just assuming we're going to offer those uh, in advance of January thirteenth. So this would be one of the comments, if I'm not mistaken. Sure. Or one of the or one of the subjects that would be presented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that right, Eric? Sure. I mean, it could it could be. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I guess. So as Sherry points out, we could just say, no, you can't use the, you can't improve the trail. Um, and that has its own effect. And we could also, if we did that before the comment period was up, I guess we could also file that as a comment that the select board um, denied the approval to um, make any changes to the Buffalo Mountain Trail if that was what the will of the board was um, and that might influence the PUC I don't know I mean it seems like in some ways we've, we've waited long quite a while to do this and that if we're like if we're gonna make that comment we might as well make up our mind about whether we're gonna allow it or not in the near future just get that over with and then everybody can move on yeah I mean, at some point we have to make that decision yeah, and part of it seemed, to me anyway, that we were waiting for them to tell us whether they could even do it with the, right. you know, and we never got that answer, and they just decided to move on. Um, yeah, they're, they're kind without, of running off the clock while, 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 while they're not doing what we asked them to do over a year, I think it was over a year right. ago. Yeah, too. this has been a long so time. Be really clear about it and just say no. And then, so um, we have a question from Michael Deering, who was on the line. Um, he asked, what of the impact on a forest reserve zoned area? Or I think he meant, what is the impact on a forest reserve zoned area? I feel like in our zoning. Um... I'm sure that planning and, and yeah, DRB is all looking at that. Um, so that could be part of the public 
meeting as well, I suppose. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can answer that tonight. Yeah. Could we go home? Yeah, let's go home. Um, so thank you, everyone. Um, and we're going to take up, we'll, we will at some point have to take up this question of um, permission to upgrade that, that trail. Do I continue with just, uh, you know, wait for the balloon test and then we just keep this opportunity open for um, uh, some type of a public forum moving forward or public meeting? I think that's yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, right, got it. I just want to make sure I get my action issue. item in order. Maybe we should put the road issue on our agenda next time. We can, if people want to do that. Not on the agenda for next time. Kayla gave a thumbs up. Wiz says, sure, why not? Yeah. All right, next time. Coming soon to a theater near you. All right, um, so that's that ends our select board meeting for tonight. Thank you, everyone. And we're adjourned. Good night. Happy, happy Good night, evening. Guys. Good night. Everybody have a good night. Thanks, everybody. Good night, everybody.